Welcome back to Elevator Paso, guys. This is the part of the section when we get to elevate our soul and see what we could do to constantly progress and elevate to that point of perfection and uh, stability we are seeking. And for this today, we have come to speak with Ismael Gutierrez. How are you, brother? Pretty good, brother. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Ismael is the current district deputy for the York Rite Masonry in our area, as well as a past high priest, uh, past Christ illustrious, uh, past worship master. Well, I'm the current seated master of the oldest lodge in town. So. Which is El Paso Lodge 130. Let's start by telling, telling us a little bit about that. So, El Paso Lodge number 130 uh, belongs to the fraternity of Freemasons. Uh, you know, it's a worldwide fraternity that has uh, existed since time immemorial. Uh, El Paso Lodge 130 was chartered uh, January 21st, 1854. Wow. Uh, and it, they, they used to meet at San Isaiah, which, which was the county seat at the time. And so, uh, that lodge, uh, you know, had uh, the first five mayors of El Paso were members there. You had uh, a lot of brothers that were Jews and, uh, you know, uh, prominent figures here in El Paso. So. And this is the lodge that you're currently the worship master for? Yes, it would be uh, considered the president. Just think of it as the, the, you know, the Rotary Club or the Lions Club, I'm the president. And tell me a little bit about what the fraternity itself or what the order itself is geared towards. So masonry is kind of hard uh, to define as, you know, personally, I think it's it's hard to synthesize in words. To me, I think it's a constant uh, reminder of, you know, doing good deeds and, you know, uh, li living honorably. I, that's what I think the fraternity is all about. Yeah, I wouldn't agree more. And so, from being the worshipful master, you are also in the York Rite. Uh, tell us about the York Rite. What is that body about? And uh, a little bit about its morals. York Rite, uh, again, belongs to the uh, fraternity of Freemasons, and uh, it's, it's a, a, you know, a Christian order uh, per se. So it, uh, it teaches these moral uh, lessons by a system of degrees. So you go and you learn things and, you know, you get uh, kind of like a test on it afterwards, and, you know, it goes back all the way to King Solomon's Temple. And, you know, the stonemasons used to work there. And so your right has a, a stronger emphasis on the building of the temple itself. So, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the craftsmen would, you know, earn their wages and would progress from, you know, the first degree known as the entered apprentice to the fellow craft is the second. And then they attain, uh, you know, the highest degree in masonry known as the master mason. So continuing that education, it just adds up your right just continues on, you know, what you learn in uh, Blue Lodge or Symbolic Lodge. So, what is the York right uh, meant for you, and how has it helped you evolve in your life? Well, one of the biggest misconceptions of people, that people have of us is that, you know, we are a sect, we are religious, uh, or a religion, but it, it is, masonry is really not, you know, usurps, you know, religion. It's religious in some aspects, but it is not a religion. To me, I'm not only a Christian, I'm also a Mason. And I think that goes hand in hand with, you know, the teachings and, you know, I, uh, every time I get up, you know, I see those, those moral teachings in practice. So, uh, you know, in that sense, I'm really, really happy to, you know, put it into, you know, action, so to speak. So fundamentally, being that it's uh, pseudo-religious, but not a religious institution itself, uh, what are the prerequisites to be able to become a Mason? That's a very good question. So uh, a lot of people don't know you have to have, you know, a clean record, you know, be, you know, in, you know, good terms of society. You, you can't, you know, become a Mason if you're a criminal or have been, you know, involved in some sketchy businesses. You have to be a man of character. And secondly, you have to be, you know, a U.S. citizen, and, you know, basically those are the most important ones. But another one that I would define is, you know, you have to believe in a, in a higher, uh, in a deity, in a supreme being, you know? And so the beauty of the fraternity is that it brings uh, men from all walks of faith, you know, and, and it, you know, uh, we, we see each other as brothers. So you have Jews, you have Christians, you have, you know, 
the Protestants, we have the Methodists, the Baptists, uh, uh, the Episcopalian, you know, all these presidents have, you know, been part of the journey. Now, outside of the spiritual aspect of how masonry is able to complement that, has this been able to complement your life in a secular manner? I, I, I feel that when you're able to attain that master level degree, it seems as if you're able to uh, be able to engage with society in a higher level. You're absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, masonry uh, has brought you know some of the greatest minds in history. Right. But um, masonry inculcates that you should always be humble, and your your, your walk of faith should you know uh, talk about it, should preach about that. And so, um, yeah, masonry in practice, you know, everywhere I go, every action that I do, you know, you 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 you, you become uh, less, so somebody can become, you know, as your show uh, elevated, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's basically what we. What does masonry say in regards to fairness with others? So masonry is one of those. Uh, goes, uh, you know, the, the founding fathers, the majority of them were masons and. Uh, you know, it's embedded in our constitution. It's the equality. You know, it's the uh, we we meet on the level. It's a it's a metaphor that we use because there's nobody. I mean, you you can have a, a sit down and log with a brother who's a janitor as well as a brother who's a mayor. And you know, in my own life, as well as in your right, we have brothers from all walks of life. And a lot of people assume that you know well, we are quote unquote the Illuminati or we are you know devil worshippers. But you know. That's not true, you know, and so uh, people seem to believe, you know, almost everything. And opinions masquerade as facts, I believe. And, you know, uh, you know, just because people say that we do this and that doesn't mean that, you know, we actually do. So education is another important thing that Masons value because it corresponds to your own faith and you become closer, as you said earlier, to, you know, being closer to your God. Uh, what the Masons call the Grand Architect of the Universe. Now, how does the symbology of a square fit into perhaps uh, business dealings? So, you, you've heard of uh, the famous uh, brother uh, Theodore Roosevelt and his uh, late cousin uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, uh, Theodore was the one that you know actually put uh, masonry in practice because he's the one that you know believed that everyone should have a fair and square, you know. Uh, uh, deal and so we all benefit when you know everybody you know helps one another not just the select few that that is another misconception that people care so it sounds to me like it's a system that is designed to make a good person better work on yourself and at the same time those around you are elevated with you is absolutely. this correct absolutely every every day every walk uh, you know every day that we wake up we have an opportunity to practice virtues, you know? And so masonry, that's what it is all about. You know, there, we are reserved in the sense that, you know, we keep the things that we discuss in our business meetings private, but we are not a secret society. I think we're a society that is reserved and that, you know, uh, has a lot of people of faith in it. So in regards to going in through that hierarchy, getting to the degree that someone like yourself possesses, uh, is this the moment when you get handed the keys to the Ferrari at the million dollars? No, no. Uh, uh, quick. Uh, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is I think we, life is one of the best schools you could you learn from. And masonry, when I first went in there, I worked myself from the bottom, you know, all the way up. You know, I remember when I used to go and I used to wash dishes and, you know, help the brothers there. But I did that because I was seeking, you know, to become a Mason. Because I thought I was spiritually fit and, you know, and, uh, you know, I was mature on some levels. And I said, you know what, Masonry is, you know, for me. So I worked myself, you know, from literally took me about seven years to achieve the, the current position of the president. And it's a humbling experience when you see that, you, you know, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You're here in El Paso. I mean, from Peter Kern to, you know, all these brothers from Tom Lee, uh, Trost and Trost, yeah, Gustavus Trost, all of them belong to, you know, this fraternity of the Freemasons. And so that, that, that alone is, you know, one of the best uh, lessons you've learned. As a Mason, how do you see your responsibility before society? So I think Masons are, are held to, you know, uh, a higher standard, I think. 
you know, uh, because people assume negative things about us. And so that's another opportunity where we can show them that in reality, we do care for the destitute. We do care for, you know, uh, all religions. We care for equality, essentially. And we care, uh, you know, we're, we are, we're all part of humanity as a whole. So it sounds like beyond being able to work and perfect yourself, there is a philanthropic aspect to the order? Most, most definitely. So uh, masonry contributes millions of dollars, and so a lot of people don't know this, but masonry, uh, you know, we were talking about the York, right? I am the, the district deputy grand high priest of, uh, of, uh, of the El Paso uh, area, and uh, York Rite has uh, the Knights Templar, they have the Eye Foundation, you go to the Scottish Rite, you have uh, the hospitals for orthopedic needs, and you know, it's incredible the philanthropy that we do. Not to exclude the Shriners, everybody knows the Shriners, right? right? Know so the little guys, yeah. and so, you know, when you see that, uh, that, the charity aspect of it, I mean, that's who we are at our core, you know, we believe that we have a moral duty to help others. And I saw it when I, when I look at all these people that, that were brothers in history from, from the United States to Mexico, you know, they, they, they felt a moral uh, uh, obligation to help their fellow man. And so I feel, you know, even if it's small acts of kindness, you know, I see masonry in action. And so it's kind of hard to conceptualize at times masonry. I consider it to be, for many people like Princeton, it's not intended for everybody. And it it uh, it brings people from all walks of life, you know. And like I said, you know, and I reiterate it, you know, you have a janitor and, and the mayor, and they all, you know, meet with deference to one another, and that's beautiful. Yeah, there, there is no doubt that there's a certain uh, quality of conversation of dialogue when there isn't an ego involved when you're there meeting. Uh, seeking truth uh, with that as a common denominator and nothing else, I, I believe that's when conversation and thought frames are really elevated. Absolutely. Now, is this something that you have found to be a steady uh, pattern all throughout masonry? I think so. You know, I think, uh, I mean, on, on that same vein, I think, you know, it's important to surround yourself with men on the same, uh, you know, level as you in terms of trying to, you know, do unto others as you would like them to do to you. Exactly. And so you have to surround yourself, when you surround yourself with brothers, uh, you know, attorneys and whatnot, businessmen, and you also surround yourself with brothers who are good at constructing things and, you know, fixing cars or whatever. And, you know, there's always that humility in masonry to me. And so uh, that, that, a lot of people think that, you know, we, we're the crib of the crop, you know, and so it's only open to certain, you know, uh, certain circles. That's not so. It's open to everyone. You know, if you believe in, you know, God, if you believe, uh, if you, you know, conform to the society and are a peaceable citizen, then, you know, the fraternity is for you. So there's a dichotomy here. Absolutely. The perception seems to be that uh, Masons are power hungry, that they, they obviously possess some sort of social uh, income, social uh, monetization, social power. But at the same time, it sounds like all the teachings are about this debt to the ego. Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, you, 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 you hit the nail on the head. Masonry does teach that you have to, uh, you know, become less so somebody could, like your show, ele be elevated, become more. And um, yeah, you, you, you find in the fraternity, you know, all these things that you, you, you go through life and you're like, wow. You know, I learned this here, and I'm applying it here. Right. And it's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, it, it, it's nice to have a lot of degrees and say, you know what, I, you know, I, I'm good with you know in economics, and you know, we live in a society where where hard work pays off, and you know, this upward uh, mobility. You know, you, you work hard, but it is also I think that it's nicer to possess morals and to have integrity, and I think that is what masonry is all about. And that's what it teaches you, it reminds you, and it holds you to a higher standard. And in fact, let me tell you something, my, my uncle, his, uh, his father was a Mason, and so he said that he would always be criticized for being a Mason, you know, and he never lost his peace, you know, and so after hours, he told me this one time, after hours, you know, they were telling him that he wears the devil, he said, you know what, are you guys going to stay out to eat? And so I think we have to have, be, peace, uh, be at peace with ourselves, 
because we know that, you know, we're working on that inner temple. It's a metaphor, uh, you know, and so we're working on that temple, but we also have to practice, you know, the golden rule, you know, do unto others as you would like them to do to you. And so now in, in today's society, in the digital age, you know, there's so much information out there, and the majority of it, people, you know, don't question, you know, whether it's uh, factually correct, whether it's true, whether, you know, people seem to believe everything except the truth, you know, and that's who we are. We're charitable in nature. We're, we, we embrace uh, brotherhood. You know, it's important. Sometimes you don't have to be blood-related, you know. You and I have, have been, you know, good friends, and so you do not have to be blood-related to, you know, be a good person. And so, not every good, you know, and not every time you do something good, you know, you have to be rewarded. No, you have to just do it naturally. It has to come, you know, naturally. So, um, so it seems like we covered most of our bases. Uh, at some point or another, there has to come up a moment when masonry is something that just uh, is solidified in your life. It's something that that you live. And everybody else notices that there's something different about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, when someone has that curiosity, how does one get to go and, I don't know, become one? Well, you, you, the, the missionary is, we don't solicit for our members. Even though if we compare it to other organizations, we've been in a decline in membership-wise. But uh, we, we can't solicit for membership, but we can't... Uh, if you are interested in becoming a mason or, you know, you've read about it in the, or seen it in the History Channel, what you can do is just Google it, you know, just find, you know, Mason uh, Sonic Lodge, and everything starts there. Then, if, if, as you progress in the degrees, you go to York Rite, Scottish Rite, and uh, the Shrine. And so, all those have moral teachings, all those are geared uh, towards, you know, different systems of philosophy and whatnot, but they all... At, at their core, teach you know, being a good person. Yeah, and, and uh, to be one, ask what. Absolutely. So, that's very good. So now tell me, out of all your degrees, your personal favorite. I'd have to say New York Rite, the Order of the Temple, is my favorite. Really? Yes. Well, I, I would not be able to do that. And, you know, I, I, <laughs> my, the, my first degree, the, the, the initiation, I, I'll never forget. Right. You right. know about that, especially yeah. how they do it in Hawaii. So. Right, right. And then becoming a master was very unique, but also the, the Order of the Temple, as well as the, the Royal Arch. Right. Well, to yeah. me, those four are what you find. Yeah, if, if you would have asked me what was the second one, Royal Arch is definitely yeah. up there because of what it teaches and what it reminds you at your obligations as a Mason are. So, yeah. Without a doubt. Brother, thank you so much for your time. I hope we're going to come back. It's always good with you again. Most of the brother, you always have your doors open here. And that works? Uh, be kind to others because everything that you do does come back.